If you want the gills, we got the skills right here at 302 Fishing. Good morning, guys. Welcome back to the channel here. I cannot say enough how excited I am to be shooting this episode that we're getting ready to go to right now. Uh, for weeks, uh, we have been planning this thing, uh, you know, between life and kids and jobs and everything else. Uh, it just hasn't panned out. But finally, we got our sub Mark right here. So he connected with me, and we are going to go to a very exclusive and very private pond, uh, maybe about 20 or 30 minutes away from the, each one of us. But uh, he's got permission to get in here, guys. And uh, apparently, there are some giants in this pond, allegedly. There is. Speaking on this guy. Seeing nine pounder come out of there. All right, man. So he's saying they're nine pounders, guys, man. You know, unicorns are five pounds or above here in Delaware. So it's possible I could potentially, or even Mark, could potentially catch a PB. That's a possibility he's saying in this pond right now. Uh, literally, I think he said there's two or three ponds in here, but we're going to concentrate our efforts on the one he feels has the biggest fish. We got a whole bunch of baits in the back right here, guys, and rods and uh, everything that we need to do to try to get fish on the end of the line today. We've got nothing in our way, man. No kids, no jobs, nothing like that. We're straight pure fishing today, and hopefully, if we're lucky, guys, we're going to get some monsters on. On a side note, I want to thank each and every one of you guys, man, from the first subscriber all the way up to almost right where we're getting ready to go to right now, and that's 2,000 subscribers, guys. We are less than 10 people away. You've been absolutely fabulous, and again, we love each and every one of you, and we appreciate uh, all of what you guys have done to get us to where we're at right now. It means the world to us. But we're going to get past that next goal and try to achieve our next one. So keep watching, guys. Hopefully, we bring out a banger for you in the next couple seconds. But uh, me and Mark are going to concentrate right now as to what we're going to be using and uh, try to get these fish on in the shortest time possible. So, Mark, what are your thoughts on today? It's going to be a good day. <laughs> it's gonna be He's a, a man day. of many words, guys. <laughs> Let's get this fish on. So we're on this uh, super exclusive pond, as I mentioned to you. Mark is over in the distance over here. He is fishing an imitation shad type bait. He doesn't know what make it is. He just buys it and just puts it on the end and hopes it works. <laughs> Walmart. Walmart. There you go, man. We love Walmart. Uh, I am going to go ahead and try to use a buzz bait to start off because I tried to film an episode yesterday and I got a couple swipes off of the buzz bait. Uh, you heard me right, guys. It's almost November in about a week and uh, we were getting swipes on the buzz bait. Late fall bass, guys. So hopefully maybe get a giant off of that. I don't know. But I picked a whole bunch of baits here and uh, there's fish jumping around right now guys right right in front of us it so something must be chasing something around but uh, let's stop talking let's start fishing man we got all the baits in the world and i'll let you know what they are as i use them but right now we got the strike king uh buzz bait that we like to use black blue and uh, the swim bait is called the deal that's uh, by z-man it's one of those elastic uh, type baits the water's warmed up a little bit. It's about almost lunchtime, a little bit after, I guess. Well, I at least want to go off the edges here. This water, uh, ground blew me. It's super soft, man. It's very sandy and mushy. Good thing about where we're fishing at right now, you can see the wind's kind of blowing around and everything, but we're literally below these uh, mounds, guys, so it's kind of blocking off most of the wind because I'm sure it'll be 10, 15 mile an hour winds, man, if we are not protected by this section here. But we got a whole bunch of water to try to cover here. As we're fishing along here, I know we mentioned we're gonna have a lot of baits here, but everything that we do use, guys, we're gonna drop it right down in the description field below. Uh, I'll put some links to where you can buy these items at. But these are the things I like to fish with in the fall. And this will be a first for me right here if I can get a buzz bait hit way late in the fall. Because usually I'm just, you know, late summer, early spring. That's usually when I use my buzz baits, but never this far into the season. <laughs> All right, so here's the Strike King uh, Black Blue buzz bait that I was using. Of course, we got the Z-Man swim bait that's on there. You can see how much it stretches so it doesn't really tear off. And, of course, we got a stinger on the end of that bait right there. But let's go ahead and switch over to the lipless crankbait. We lost our Delta Red guys uh, yesterday because uh, we got caught up on that mesh in these community ponds, and that's all she wrote. So today we are using Strike King Chili Crawl, that other red one we were talking about. Let's 
get that bait out there. See if we can scare up there. Like I said, Mark and I are literally watching fish jumping out of the water over here. So why wouldn't they want to hit this lipless crankbait? Yeah, right? It's gonna be a nice day today. We got a little bit of cloud cover here. It was literally supposed to be 73 degrees today here. One week before November. It's usually around 50s, usually high 40s right around this time. If we're lucky. <laughs> but again, I'm in a spot where I'm blind as to what... Oh, there was a hit right there, guys. I'm blind to what's going on here. I got to rely on what Mark is telling me uh, to where to fish and everything. So... I'm not going to have any super expertise commentary on here because, again, it is unfamiliar ground that I'm in right now. As we always do, we wing it. <laughs> oh, almost, guys. Got a lot of uh, vegetation right behind us. That could have been a major catastrophe if I went full force on that. All right, I'll switch over. Try to Ned Brig for a couple seconds, and as, like I said, we'll move over to where Mark's at. Just to try and, we're just trying to search and look for life here, guys. I think we got fish on guys there we got fish on got one all right i saw my bait going off to the left hand side a little dink and here we go guys skunk is off hitting the ned rig all right mark your turn <laughs> The reason why I cast it over there, guys, I'll tell you in a second here, once I get the uh, hook out of the face of this little fish. Fun fact, I forgot to tell you. What's that? They do like to hit near the shoreline. Yeah, that's, that's why I threw, it was right up near the shoreline. So we got this nice little stocky little dude right here. But uh, the one thing I noticed, and why I can't, oh, quick release, <laughs> is I was watching bait fish jump all over here, specifically over here on the right hand side on the shoreline. And no sooner did I drop that Ned Rig over there, that's when that little guy pounced on it. All right. See the bait fish jumping right over here, guys? Using a turd by uh, Z Man, guys. Uh, it is PB and J. That's the color that we're using. Of course, we're using the, uh, the shroom head as our. Uh, Weighted hook to get that bait down there. But there was no solid strike on that, guys. All I felt was a slight pull, and then I watched the line just move. There was another hit right there, guys. Again, another little one probably futzing with it. I think he already has it. Oh, totally missed him. <laughs> it was definitely a little one, man, tagging on the end of it. fish right there guys I think that's just bottom what do I got here stick fish <laughs> all right let me move along get out of this section right here I'd like to try to cast and that choke point over here and then of course that choke point right there uh, let's get our little bugger uh, hooked over here, and we'll figure out how to get over to Mark. So you want more spots? Yeah, whenever you want, bud. Uh, all right, left or right? Which you part? tell me. Which you run the joint, man. I don't know what's up. <laughs> let's go to this one since we're over here. Which one? This corner down here. Okay. We're over here. So Mark is uh, making the calls. Uh, he's going to shift spots. We're going to go over towards that point over there. 
All right, Mark, lead the way, buddy. Let me grab my rods here real quick. Right side hard, my guide here, Mark, who will take us through the densest jungles. <laughs> anyway, we're just gonna follow the lead with Mark. He knows what's up and where all the good spots are. All right, so I'm gonna walk over here. We're gonna jump in the truck in a couple seconds here, but I kinda wanna give you a vantage point of what we're looking at right here. So I'm gonna try to get on top of this hill. And uh, you can see the size of the pond that we're dealing with right here. It goes all the way over here and all the way back there, guys. So this is all the land we gotta cover in a couple hours. All right, so uh, Mark's gonna make his way down over here somehow. I think we have to go over this way to come down to this shoreline right here. But we've got a lot of lay downs that are over here. We've got some nice looking trees, a little bit of shade over here. So let's try to make our way down there and see if we can try to pick off a couple fish over here. What's that? Uh, R.I.P. to the deer. <laughs> He's been sitting there for a while, man. Oh, yeah. He picked him clean. Over there, ribs over there. Yeah, look. <laughs> Nature gets it, man, I'm telling you. They didn't leave anything uh, to waste here. Let me walk over here. And uh, let's get to work. Let me cast in the middle here first, guys. I'm gonna crank bait it up, and then we'll start slowing it down. Again, we're just gonna keep going back and forth with the baits. We have not even established a pattern yet. Again, we only have one fish, and that was off the Ned rig. And uh, Mark over here said he had a couple pops over here on the bait. He thinks he might have been hit by a crappie, because obviously they like to hang by these trees and everything else like that in schools. And we're right around the right time of the year for them to be schooling up. Right there, right at the shoreline, guys. See him? I watched him literally chase the bait right to it. <laughs> I saw that thing come out from the depths, man, and it smashed the crap out of his uh, crankbait. All right, guys, another dink. <laughs> that was crazy, man. Maybe if I can, I'll put it in slow motion. You can see that fish literally come out of the depth right there if it's in camera. That thing was almost at my toes. Let me try to put my tip in here. Oh uh, yeah, we got at least well over a foot right, right here, guys. We got just about a foot worth of depth right here, so it's not unusual for them to come swooping up because you can see the little drop off, it's right here. Throwing a couple casts over everybody's bushes, I would think something would have been over there, guys, but we're not getting any bites at all. Looks like we're over the uh, trees here. Let's see if we can get out of there. Oh, oh we're good. <laughs> got a little bit of a wind, man, so it's gonna push it all the way into the uh, foliage over there. So I gotta kinda compensate for the wind. Got one? All right, Mark Scott went over there, guys. Oh, he's a jumper, too. Good looking size. I just saw it come out of the water. What do you got? Lift it up, man. Let's take a walk. Oh, yeah. There you go. Nice size. Let's take a walk over there, guys. Looks like a pounder. And uh, we'll see what kind of bait he was using there. I know he's been using a swim bait. But uh, we'll walk over there. Finally, he gets one on. He's not skunked either. But he's beating me. He's got a bigger fish than I do. Oh, uh, there you go. <laughs> a little dark swim bait. Excellent. Perfect fish, guys. Like I said, it's about a pound. And he's got a little uh, ball jig on there with a uh, kind of like an orange, kind of rustic kind of belly. And it smashed the daylights out of it. As soon as we hit the water. Yeah. So, 
first casserole. We'll see what happens if he gets another one off there, because maybe that might make me put out my uh, my bullshit swim bait by uh, Buka. All right, so we got swim bait, we got Ned rig, and got a crank bait. Now we just have to figure out what that pattern is. So since he had that nice little hit off of the swim bait, I'm gonna go on the same principle as he is, because again, he's throwing way out deep out there, guys. So I'm gonna put this on my spinner rod to slow down and retrieve, and hopefully this fish will catch up on this uh, gizzard chat here for my, my buka. I want a slow gear ratio. I don't want to go too super fast with it. That's why I'm throwing it on a spinning rod. All right, here we go. Buka engaged. <laughs> Give a couple seconds to let that uh, sink. We're gonna try a you know, slow retrieve, guys, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna slow retrieve and I kind of jig it up and let it flutter on down. And first cast, I snag it, guys. How about that, huh? <laughs> there is something there. Oh, that's money out the door, guys. Too, like yeah. I'm gonna try to walk over here and see if we can break it free. You gotta hate that, guys. One cast and get caught. Oh man, we got lucky, guys. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> All right, man. That would have sucked. Those baits aren't cheap, guys. <laughs> right <laughs> all right so mark is gonna uh, say hey we're gonna make another move again we're gonna go over across the way here where all the uh equipment is at and everything all those rocks are yep. we were able to pull two small dinks out of this section so we're starting to somewhat produce but not to the quality where we want uh fish wise out of this body of water because he said there are big ones here and one of us has got to get a giant here somewhere where you at mark hold on all right, I'm gonna run over here. Mark's already got a fish on, but we're gonna walk back over here in a couple seconds. I wanna throw my old heads back to the day of uh, when cars were ugly as hell and the worst pieces of crap ever made <laughs> on earth. But let's walk through here. Mark has another one on. What did you catch it on, bud? Uh, swim bait again, guys. All right, check it out. He's got this pipe that he's fishing by. You almost got one of the uh, jewels, guys. But uh, look, he got a little dink right here and a little pool right by these rocks off that little swim bait, guys. Walmart. See the concrete uh, tube right there? <laughs> nice. All right, all my oldies. And we're not talking about you just being on the YouTube channel for two years. I'm talking about oldies with the gray beers or walking with the canes and everything else like that. If you're an 80s baby, a 90s baby, you may have seen it, but this is one of the biggest pieces of crap that were ever built known to man, guys. Remember the movie uh, Die Hard with Samuel Jackson and that crappy car that he was driving in the middle of New York? You got it, guys. Check it out. Boom. We got a Yugo. <laughs> what a piece of crap. <laughs> Verification that's a Yugo? <laughs> But man, that was an ugly looking car, man. This thing, man, is a monstrosity. But it's pretty cool to see it, man. It kind of throw me back to my days when I was a young kid seeing these things rolling around. But it, it's where it belongs, guys, right here. Just sitting there as a pile of heap, mother nature and growing up around it and just taking her over. And we got hooked up on something already, guys. Oh, God, I almost busted my ankle on there. So I didn't, I didn't, didn't panic here. I'm just gonna co come the opposite way to where I casted it. And hopefully if we're lucky, we can get it to break free, which it feels like it just did. Yep, we got lucky. <laughs> so I gotta check the line. And it's quite frayed up, so we definitely have to retie again. Got it all retied back up again. Back in action. But uh, this is the most baits that I've lost or other potentially lost in, in one episode. Wow. 
lot of obstacles here. <laughs> guys there we go that's a decent one too decent one all right i knew something hit me when i threw it the previous time before this one here all right go skill you can definitely see this one's kind of feeding right now guys look how big the belly is on that little guy but i threw it out there once i felt a slight tap threw it right back into the same spot again and that little fish banged up on it but uh Try to get this out of the uh, fish's uh, fin here. He's got it right there caught because he kind of got snagged when I hit him. There we go, it came out pretty good. But hey, they're again gradually getting bigger. And you can see the tails are all red there. See how red that tail is? I'm turning around this way, you can see it easier. See how red that tail is? But pretty little bass, let's get it on its way. He's gone. So here's the uh, lipless that we're using right now. That is the Guggenbait that we're using. That's the clutch. This one here in particular is called Ghost Gill. Uh, you can see that you got the Sartre two send on here. You got your little orange tip right there. And of course, all the classic colors of a bluegill on this bait changed up to the red hooks. And uh, these fish seem to be hitting close to shore. That's literally what Marion Mark had been catching them at. It's right hugging up against there. But again, still all dinks. We still haven't found that giant yet. All right, as I get almost towards the truck right here, my game plan is gonna change. I am gonna go with the cheap way, guys. We're gonna go right down to the Bandito bug. That way, if we're losing plastics, that's no big deal. Uh, it's tough losing all these expensive lures, especially on a, a pond you really don't know anything about. And we've already lost two crankbaits already. So I'm not about spending a whole bunch of money losing baits. I'm all about keeping my bait on and catching fish. Okeechobee crawl, we're gonna go with that. The water stained, we're gonna go with the blue on top. Again, we had success with this bait before, so why not try it again? And you guys remember the uh, hint that I told you that I was using a three to four aught hook, and I told you to go down to a two? Well, that's what we have right now. That way, hopefully, this hook will stay on better uh, to this uh, bait here, and uh, we won't lose as many or tear it up as much. So give me a couple seconds. Let's rig that up, and uh, let's start kicking that out there, man. Try to pull some more fish out. I think we got a fish on, guys. There we go. All right. Long time, guys. It took us a long time. We finally got another one. <laughs> I felt a pull, but it wasn't a hit. And it wasn't even moving either. So I decided to lay into it. Nice little, it looks like a spotted bass right there, guys. But I figured something would be near those little branches there. That's why I threw near there. But it felt like a long pull. And then it kind of moved a little bit to the left. But another fish on. Boom. That's crazy. Just that little bit that's sticking out right there. There's fish right by it, man. Any bit of structure they can put themselves by, they'll sit by. Here we go, guys. Got another one on. Yes. All right. There must be a school of them over there, guys. This is by far the biggest one we had today. Right here. <laughs> That's the way they want them, guys. It's nice and slow, nice and slow. All right, that's a pounder, guys. When I'm bringing it in, it feels like the bait just comes to a complete dead stop. And then again, you barely just see it moving either left or right. All right, man, I had to sacrifice the bait because the hook is down there, guys. We got it out. Boom, there you go. Little pounder. Let's keep it going, guys. There's a good one there, guys. All right, what do we got? Oh, we got a crappy. Oh man, that was a nice crappy, guys. About a pound. Holy crap. 
<laughs> oh man that's a shame <laughs> he got my line all jacked up too guys that was a nice dark crappy all right looks like we found the little honey hole right now wish mark was here so he can join in on the fun but we're sticking right where the fish are producing i'd love to catch that crappy again so you guys can see that that thing was dark as hell all by those tiny little branches sticking right out of the water guys isn't that crazy you would think they'd be around stuff like that just for the heck of it i'm gonna go ahead and throw that spinner bait out there just to see if we can bang a bass here whoa 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 we got a big one guys big one big one all right and we got a decent one here that thing smashed the daylights out of that bait guys he felt like 200 pounds the way he hit good lord almighty <laughs> All right, keep them coming, guys. Keep them coming. Wow, that thing struck like lightning. Welcome to 302 Mountain Nearing Channel, guys. <laughs> we were climbing hills, guys. We we're going down gullies, man. We we're falling down cliffs. We we're chopping trees. We we're climbing over garbage like this over here, guys. Lots of stuff. Absolute insane stuff we had to go through just to get the fish that we were getting right now, guys. We didn't get the monster. Uh, Mark did hit a big one, but he was off camera, unfortunately, and he was on the, yeah, about five or six pounds. He was way off camera, and I wouldn't have known. But we did come to the location, try it out, and it was a bust. It didn't come back. Uh, of course, I lost another bait. <laughs> how much? How I many did I lose? Two. More. two. <laughs> I lost. I lost two more, right? We must have lost eight baits today, guys. It was absolutely ridiculous, man. It was snags all over the place. But we fought and we fought and we fought and we got, again, a nice little bevy of bass. I mean, granted there were dinks, who cares? We caught fish, guys. That's all that matters on this channel, putting fish in front of you. Mark caught his couple and I caught maybe six, seven, eight of them, especially when we had that little flurry over by those tiny little twigs over there. But again, his pattern turned out to be that swim bait and in mine, eventually, after how many hours, three or four hours we've been here, uh, it turned up to be that bandito bug, the Okeechobee crawl that caught those bass, guys. So. We're going to get out of here. We're absolutely tired. Mark's been grumbling for like, like an hour. I'm hungry. Yep. So we're going to get out of here, guys, and uh, <laughs> go get some food and uh, try and maybe come back out here again another time. Uh, we haven't figured it out as of yet. It's possible we might come out tomorrow. We don't know. Possible. But uh, we'll, we'll figure that out because we got we do see a front that's coming through right now. And we don't know how it's going to treat these fish right now. But uh, hopefully you guys have a great day. Like subscribe push that notification bell guys so you get them future episodes right up in front of you every time we update uh, this channel here of course give us a thumbs up if you like everything that you're seeing give a comment down below good bad or indifferent we're going to each answer it each and every time guys and as always fish on